Amen. Before we consider today's scripture reading and today's message, I want to thank Ryan and Ashley. I want to thank Clint and the worship leadership team. I want to thank everyone who's a part of ministry this morning, children's ministry, youth ministry, adult Sunday school classes. I want to thank our online team for connecting everyone both here and online. I also want to say a special word of welcome. We've always got people worshiping live online from all over the place, but there's a very special community people worshiping in Cisco out in Eastland, Texas this morning who are with us. So God bless y'all. We are blessed that you have joined our worship community. So everyone, I uh, want to acknowledge the decorations today. It's a little special here. This is a very special day in the broader life of the Universal Church. This is a day where churches like ours that observe kind of a larger Christian calendar have set apart every single year, the first Sunday in November. It's a day called All Saints Day, and it's a special day of reflection and recognition built into the church calendar specifically to address some of the biggest needs and issues in our everyday theological life. And I want to talk about that in a minute. Didn't introduce myself. My name is Lance Marshall. I'm the senior pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Fort Worth. Been in ministry at this church. is my 10th year now. And I've had a chance to encounter so many of you in different phases of life. I have not yet encountered the person who says, can I please have a meeting with Pastor Lance? Can I please meet with Pastor Lance? And then we meet and they go, I just have to tell you, everything's going great. <laughs> Everywhere, all the time. I mean, just great thing upon great thing. That is happening for so many people. That's not normally when they initiate a meeting, but I would, if that's you sometime, reach out. I would love to have that. I do get a chance to meet with people, though, that are going through difficult times, and it is an honor and a blessing and a gift and a very important part of ministry and a holy thing to get invited into your life if you're ever going through moments like that. We have so many pastors and congregational care ministers here that want to make sure that you're going through that with somebody, and that speaks to the differences in some of the things that I've walked with people alongside that they're going through, you know, in just 10 years of everyday ministry, I've had a chance to walk with you through illnesses. I've had a chance to walk with you through losses in the family. I've had a chance to walk with you through business collapses, marriages ending, severe mental illnesses, all of these kinds of things. Every single one of them in their own way, completely tragic and difficult and hard. And together we've explored the presence and the goodness and the grace of God in the midst of those things. But there's one thing that in my experience seems to be more damaging and more suffering inducing and more toxic to the soul than any of those other experiences. The thing that I've experienced in my pastoral ministry that seems to can, uh, create more pain in the life of people than anything else is the feeling or even worse, the belief that you are actually, truly, completely alone. In my experience, that's the thing that's the most corrosive to the soul in the lives of people is the belief that they are truly alone. And this can be the byproduct of so many things in life. It can be the byproduct of difficult life experiences or families of origin or complications and relationships. But at the end of the day, sometimes people find this place believing that they are completely and truly alone. And that's horrible, not just because of the feeling of loneliness, but because the idea of connection and community and relationship and belonging is core to what it is to be human. You're created for a purpose, and the purpose is to live in community, not just with friends and family and church and neighbors, but with the God who so loved you that God breathed you and all of creation into existence for the purpose of community, because God's own self, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is community, and it makes perfect sense that a loving community like that at the source of everything would place the DNA of community into God. God's most precious creation, God's people. And so the idea of being completely and totally alone is not just sad and it doesn't just hurt and it's not just difficult, but it's corrosive to your very soul because your soul is made to live in connection to each other and to Christ. That's who you are, who you've been made to be. Every age, every background, every language, every nationality, everybody, everywhere is created for that purpose. And so that feeling of aloneness is corrosive to who you were meant to be at your core. 
And there is one experience, there is one guaranteed experience through which each and every one of us is absolutely going to pass that creates that feeling in us. And it is grief. And it is specifically grief as the result of the death of a loved one. And I'm not speaking euphemistically here. I'm not going to say uh, passed on or went ahead, etc. I'm going to name it. Death. It is the death of those whom we love that creates grief in our hearts and in our souls. And even worse, the byproduct of that grief is a feeling of loneliness because we're not naturally oriented toward grieving in community, in our culture. We take grief internally. We take it on in ourselves. And in addition to being sad, in addition to missing someone, in addition to hurting or fear, or challenges that it creates, it makes us feel overwhelmingly alone. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalms. And one of the most important things to understand when you're reading scripture and studying the Bible is what's the genre of literature in this scripture? There's so many different genres of literature, kinds of writing, different purposes. And the book of Psalms are books of prayers and hymns that come to us from the Jewish community. It's our byproduct of people living in faithfulness, sharing what it is they've experienced in deep community with the living God through the best and the worst moments of life. The writer of Psalm 77 begins in these first 10 verses describing something that each and every one of us has felt. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I'm hurting. I'm devastated. I am numb. And it's in this numbness that I'm wondering, is God even real? Is God even present? Is God even at work in the life of me or anybody else? The psalmist gives us that gift of honesty. And in the second half of that psalms, gives us the way out, the way forward, the way through, the way past those kinds of feelings. And the psalmist tells us it's in remembering. It's in remembering, recounting, recollecting, and retelling the power and the presence and the work and the faithfulness of God. It's remembering that God is a promise-making and promise-keeping God. It's remembering the kind of God who's active in the lives of those who've gone before me. It's the kind of remembering of God's activity and presence in the lives of those that we've seen in love. It's a remembering of God's presence and action and work in our own lives. The only way through the isolation and the suffering and the loneliness-inducing experience of grief is remembering. So often when we're grieving the loved ones we have who have died, we feel like telling their stories is something that would make it worse. And how many times as a friend or a family member, you haven't known what to say to someone who was grieving? Well, here's your tip. The number one thing to do next time you're walking alongside someone who's grieving the death of a loved one is to say this, tell me about them. Tell me about them. Tell me about what they loved. Tell me about what you loved about them. Tell me about their characteristic. Tell me about something funny they did. Tell me about something weird they did. Tell me about something that you will never, ever, ever till your last day forget about them. Because the recollection, the retelling keeps it alive, keeps them alive, and keeps alive the community that still exists between them. This is All Saints Sunday. At its surface level, you could look at it and say, oh, this is the service where they remember all the people who are a part of this community who have died in the last year. And that's true. But what we're also doing is remembering the promises of God. We just baptized a baby. We baptized a baby under the prevenient and justifying and sanctifying grace of Christ. Sanctifying means saint-making. And in the United Methodist Church and the majority of Christian traditions, we recognize the people who are having their lives transformed by the sanctifying grace and power of Christ. And we have a name for them. We call them saints. The people who have experienced in their life the real power and the real transformation that comes through connecting with Christ, we call them saints. And it doesn't mean you're perfect, and it doesn't mean you float when you pray, though maybe. It means we remember you 
and we remember the grace and the power and the work of Christ in you, and we remember the words of Christ, who says, God so loved the world that he sent his only son, not to condemn it, but to redeem it, restore it, and to reconcile it, and to make sure that all the people who believed, trusted, put faith in, and followed that work would have life eternal that conquers the grave. And he promises before he endures the cross and the grave and the resurrection, where I go, you're going too. Where I go, you are going too. And when we celebrate, we remember we remember that nothing can separate us from them. We remember that nothing can separate us from us. We remember that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, not even, especially, and in no way, the grave. All Saints Sunday is a day of resting deeply in the tradition and remembering the ways in which not only the people in this moment, but the lives of the faithful circle around the promises of God. Pastor Zhenya is going to come forward and she's going to begin to lead us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, the special sacrament for All Saints Sunday. And it's on this Sunday that we're going to immerse ourselves more deeply, remembering the promises and the traditions of the church with the full liturgy. Liturgy is the fancy church work, word that means work of the people. We're going to remember the full work of the people in the liturgy of All Saints Sunday because it's our way to remember the grace and power of Christ active in our lives, saving us forever, and connecting us always. So together, as a church, may we pray. Lord Jesus, break open our hearts. Help us to connect, know that we are always connected to you, to each other, that you have overcome the sting of death and deliver us and them now and always. Amen.